Meatballs are a perfect comfort food for cold winter nights. This week, I'm gonna show you how to make meatballs with a twist with a recipe for Moroccan spiced lamb meatballs. This week on Working Class Foodies. Lamb is a pretty unique meat. It's got a depth of flavor that beef and pork just can't match. But when people think of lamb, they tend to think of the pricier cuts like lamb chops or French rack of lamb. Well, lamb can actually be fairly affordable as we've shown in the past like with our lamb shanks episode. Brendan's recipe for Moroccan spiced lamb meatballs calls for ground lamb and it stretches that ingredient to pretty ample quantities. The secret ingredient here is cinnamon. It brings out a depth of flavor that matches the earthiness of the lamb without actually being sweet. Making these Moroccan spiced lamb meatballs is a great way to spend a dreary winter Sunday afternoon and it's totally worth the time and effort. But if you're in a time crunch, you can make them ahead and freeze them for up to a week, then reheat them in the sauce while you boil up some rice. We'll tell you a little bit later how to actually freeze these meatballs. The first step to making these meatballs is to saute a shallot and some garlic with your Moroccan seasoning. Mince one large shallot and mince two cloves of garlic. Heat a tablespoon of olive oil in a pan on medium low and sweat the shallot and garlic slowly. Turn the heat down to low and season with a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of paprika, then a good pinch of salt and either freshly ground grains of paradise or black pepper. Mix everything together and let the shallot and garlic cook down slowly into the spices until everything's a deep, soft brown. If too much of the liquid evaporates, add a touch of water or stock to keep everything loose. After about 10 minutes of cooking, remove the shallot and garlic from the heat and let them cool to room temperature. Next, prepare the lamb. Add about a pound and a half of ground lamb to a cold metal bowl. Crack in one egg and then dump in the cooled spiced shallot and garlic. Use a fork to break the egg and gently mix it into the shallot and garlic. Then add about two tablespoons of freshly chopped mint leaves so we're falling on and season with a generous pinch of salt and either freshly ground grains of paradise or black pepper and about half a cup of panko or plain breadcrumbs, just enough to hold the mixture together. Then gently mix everything together with your hands. Pretty much you can do this to smell. If it doesn't smell aromatic enough, you can always add smell. Yeah, it smells really good. It smells good. Yeah, it smells good. All right, cool. Now line one or two rimmed baking sheets with parchment paper. Working quickly and gently, make the meatballs. Pinch off a hunk of the seasoned meat using the pads of your thumb and first two fingers. You want the meatball to be just under the size of a golf ball or small enough to fit into the cup of your palm, just like right about there. Gently and quickly roll the meat into a ball between the cups of your palms and line the meatballs up on your parchment lined baking sheets. Now, if your meatballs are getting to be a little too warm and soft, if they're starting to look a little wilted or the fat's beginning to melt, cover your trays with plastic wrap and stick the trays in the fridge while you prepare the next step. Get out a high-sided cast iron pan or a good-sized Dutch oven and heat a few tablespoons of olive oil in it over medium-low heat. When the olive oil is hot but not smoking, sear the meatballs. Using tongs, gently transfer the meatballs to the pan and let them brown on all sides, rotating them every 30 seconds or so. Resist the temptation to crowd the meatballs. You don't want to bring down the temperature of the oil. So we're just searing them lightly just to get some flavor on them, still raw in the center, and we'll finish them off in the tomatoes. Remove the seared meatballs to a bowl and reserve the fat in the pan. At this stage, you can freeze the meatballs for later use if you want. Just line a rimmed baking sheet with a clean piece of parchment paper and line the meatballs up on it so they're not touching. Cover the baking sheet in plastic wrap and stick it in the freezer until the meatballs are frozen. When the meatballs are frozen, you can put them in a Tupperware or a large Ziploc bag and freeze them for up to a week. To continue making the meatballs on the same day, however, heat up a pan of your favorite tomato sauce or make our quick tomato and leek sauce. Finally mince the white and light green parts of one leek and put them in a bowl of cold water to get the dirt and sand off. Next, prepare the tomatoes. It's winter time now, so you might just want to pop open a box of your favorite chopped, unseasoned tomatoes in their juice. Or you can use fresh tomatoes. We took about three fresh tomatoes and we cored, seeded, and chopped them. Look at that juicy tomato, like squirted into the lens. Oh, tomato corn. Now, remember that large cast iron pan or Dutch oven, the one that you seared your meatballs in, the one that still has all that fat in it that I told you not to clean? Go ahead and reheat that, get the fat melted and hot, and then add your leeks, and then add in your tomatoes, and season with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Let the tomatoes cook down and release their juices, about 10 to 15 minutes. 
Then add the meatballs back to the sauce, nestling them into the tomatoes. If you can't fit all the meatballs in one layer, you may need to move the sauce and the meatballs to a stock pot, layering them. Sauce, meatballs, sauce, meatballs. Is this what they call balls deep? Yeah, okay. this, is, this is balls deep. Bring the sauce up to a simmer and let the meatballs cook for at least 25 minutes, but as long as an hour and a half, giving the pan a gentle shake or stir every once in a while, just to make sure that the meatballs aren't sticking and that the sauce hasn't evaporated too much. If too much of the liquid is evaporating, add in a little stock, water, or red or white wine, just enough to keep the sauce at a simmer. While our meatballs cooked, we made a tzatziki sauce to go on top. You can watch that recipe by clicking here, the link below, or by going to youtube.com slash wcfoodies and searching our channel for tzatziki. About 10 minutes before you're ready to take the meatballs off the heat, garnish with another two tablespoons of minced fresh mint and let that cook in. Remember, lamb is red meat, so it's okay if the meatballs are still a little pink in the center. Serve the meatballs, about five per person, on a bed of wild rice with a few spoonfuls of the tomato sauce and a dollop of homemade tzatziki. These meatballs would also be a great dish for a New Year's Eve party. Just reheat the tomato sauce and serve the meatballs with a toothpick in each one in the sauce to keep them warm and to keep them from drying out. This recipe made just over 40 meatballs, or eight servings, for about $22, or around $2.75 per person. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite winter dish is, and we'll see you next week on Working Class Foodies.